Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, What Makes SEO One of the Most Cost-Effective Marketing Channels in 2022? I'm Alex Schaefer. I will be your MC and host today. Um, before, we, before we jump in, a few housekeeping items, the usual ones. First, this is a, uh, we want this to be interactive. There is a, a Q&A box so that you can enter any questions that you have. It should be at the very bottom of your Zoom panel. So feel free to, uh, to just be, to drop questions in there. As we're going through the content, we will do a Q&A session um, at the very end. So we will aggregate all your questions and try to get through as many as we can. We encourage you to, to, be, uh, to, to be liberal, to, to ask any questions that, that you might have. Uh, second is that this will be a, uh, the, the content will be available on demand via recording that will be sent out early next week. We will also do a brief write-up uh, touching on the content that, that we cover and some of the main points. So if you want to share this with colleagues, if you want to pull anything that is discussed, any data that is mentioned or anything like that, all of it will be available both in video format and written format. So before, before jumping in uh, to, to, the, to the conversation today, just to, to give a little bit of context of why we decided to do a webinar on this topic in particular, you know, there's at this point, nothing, no revelation in the fact that we're, we've been through a tremendous digital acceleration over the last two years. You know, the, the, the amount of online activity has absolutely exploded e-commerce, uh, there's a number of different statistics, statistics around it, but all of them say that basically we experienced six years of growth in within a two to, to six months. And the, the acceleration continues. And a, a big result of that, a natural result of that is businesses of all sizes, small and large, are, are investing a lot more in their digital efforts. Everyone is trying to become a digital first business. They're investing very heavily in digital marketing to reach all these new people that are you know, bringing more of the customer journey online. And you know, we see some really, really compelling statistics around you know, Facebook and Google already you know, 100 plus billion dollar a year businesses, 200 billion, approaching 200 billion for, for Google. Uh, yeah, they, their, their revenue has grown 30 to 40% year over year. I mean, that's an incredible, incredible growth rate given the, already the scale of the business. And historically, they were growing 10, 10 to 15%. So um, everyone is piling into digital. Everyone is trying to figure out how to, how to get the best ROI out of their digital spend. And one of the areas that is most often overlooked and, and least understood is SEO. And SEO has the, the, the potential to be one of the absolute most impactful digital marketing channels. So I'm honored today to speak with, uh, with Oren Greenberg, a growth advisor, former head of search at Wanga, uh, someone who has worked with many scale-ups, many of the most digital savvy businesses to advise them on their digital marketing strategies. Um, today, to, to dig into what in particular makes SEO such a high potential channel and how do you unlock that potential? Oren, welcome and thank you for joining us. Hi, Alex. What a wonderful intro. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Uh, so we'll, we'll dive right into the conversation. And you know, before, before talking about specifics of SEO strategies and you know, what's the right way of, of executing on, on SEO and how to go about it, let's just give a, a little bit of a big picture of, of SEO as it is today in this more digital first world that we live in. And I'm going to actually, I'll start with the last question on the slide to, to start the, the conversation of, you know, from your perspective, someone who has a great deal of SEO knowledge, but you think very broadly about digital, you work with your clients on how do they optimize their, their digital presence? You know, why, why does SEO matter broadly given the world that we're living in? Oh, no, I mean, I think there's like a couple, a few ways to think about this. So almost every journey, a discovery journey for someone who's in a state, has a problem and is in a need state, they're going to start researching it. 
and almost the first port of call for almost any journey for the majority of human beings in the majority of countries, majority of languages is going to be Google, right? 90% plus market share and, and search in the majority of you know, English speaking countries and Europe, et cetera. So if that's such a fundamental part of their journey, any brand, e-commerce, you know, publications, B2B, SaaS, no matter what it is, people are educating themselves on the problems that they have. And, and obviously because of that, search is such a critical part of that journey. There's like one aspect where it's, it, you, you have to understand the overall journey and how and a disproportionate amount of attention real estate is given to search. But the only reason that's really important is because of the scale of search. If you look at the search volume that actually happens on, on the number of queries, like 50% of the queries are unique. You know, so people are really learning and educating and problem solving when they're looking for vendors and they're looking for, to solve the different things, but also how they come across communities and participate in communities. And there's like this tapestry where search is such a fundamental step that and it has like so much breadth. So that's like one aspect of it. I think the other aspect of it is the granularity. It's a fragmentation. It's the fact that you can actually, you know, if you're an e-commerce website, you have thousands and tens of thousands of products, you have thousands and tens of thousands of micro opportunities to garner attention. And that in accumulation is a huge traffic driver. So obviously Google gets such huge amount of shops of volume of that journey in terms of real estate. And then your opportunity to harvest such volume is spread into lots of granularity. And that may seem obvious, but that doesn't actually occur in a lot of other channels. A lot of other channels, like if you go for a paid channel, if it's LinkedIn or Facebook ads, or Google ads, you're actually gonna deplete your budget relative to the potential volume that you can drive relative to your opportunity to drive the same amount of volume for the same budget relative to search. So the uh, obviously this translates into return investment, return on marketing spend. Effectively, the opportunity to garner value from SEO is unparalleled by almost any other digital marketing channel. I think the only parallel is viral, something that goes viral. <laughs> And I don't know if people know, but the probability of you producing something goes viral is one in 35,000. So, so your opportunity to, you know, if you kind of go, I can invest in search and I can influence that, you know, there's communities out there, there's incredible tools out there. You know, we know how to influence search. Can you as confidently say that you know how to produce viral content? And the answer is no, it's, it's really hard to reproduce. So really what's the alternative? And the answer is there probably isn't really anything that's as good as search. And that's, I think, why it matters, why it's just a significant player. Yeah, that's, that, that is, a, is a great synopsis. Two things that you said there that, that really resonate with, with me and with you know, the, the clients that DeepCrawl is, is working with. And one that you, one is the, the, this notion, and I, I suppose the, the sort of intuitive reality that more of the customer journey has has come online, and you, and, you know, SEOs often think as th thought of as a solely top of funnel channel. But if you're really smart about how you approach SEO, you can really the because so much of the customer journey is now online, you can you you can create content, those micro moments, those micro queries, as as uh, you you uh, term them to help shape the customer journey to give you you the, the website owner the retailer you know whatever your online business is a greater chance of of of, of winning new customers and the 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 that that supported adobe they have a ton of research around um, online uh, purchasing activity given they have magento one of the most common e-commerce platforms and they've they, one of their the most compelling statistics throughout the uh, COVID is that uh, the, the number of first time customers in, in for online retailers has just exploded. So people are more open to trying new products, to trying new brands. And in some ways that indicates there's less brand loyalty. So you just need to have better content that is more easily discovered throughout the whole customer journey. And then the, the second thing is sort of that this notion of evergreen value of SEO. Most digital channels, you spend money. It's like a sugar high. You get you get the traffic. It goes away. You know, people click on their Facebook ads. They click on the, the paid search ad. They, they do their thing. And then that's it. You have to pay to get them again. If you have really good content, 
and you have a website that is really strong technically, if you're doing the fundamentals of SEO really well, that traffic people will, as, for as long as people are searching for whatever is relevant to on that page, you're going to get organic traffic. You're going to get that, get people coming back again and again and again, and you don't have to keep spending to, to get that traffic. So as you're thinking about ROIs, you're thinking about how to squeeze the most out of, you know, a digital marketing budget where everyone wants to spend on different things. It's a tremendous way to just get the most with spending the least. Yeah, it's a fantastic point about the um, the complexity of the funnel, right? Because most people are thinking kind of, okay, where's the search volume? It's all top of the funnel because obviously, you, you know, there's a way the generic terms are, the very broad match terms are, right? If you're using kind of uh, Google ad speak, right? Broad match, exact match and, and kind of search terms. And, and, and like, that's where people are focusing on. But actually, where's conversion happening? And it's happening on that longer tail and all of that fragmentation. Exactly. But what's also very interesting to mention is that the customer's journey is not linear. It's actually incredibly circular. And generally there's like 17 or 18 that like steps and multiple sources and referrals that people are reading as they're learning. So as you're kind of producing this content and mapping different types of content in your SEO funnel and your content marketing for paid distribution and you're kind of aligning holistically your marketing strategy, you realize people are kind of going in the loop. And as they're going in the loop, they're consuming different types of content. And then what you're getting is not just like, okay, I'm getting traffic and I need to convert it to my basket or to a subscription or whatever that is. But actually, you're starting to build brand affinity as they're touching upon different types of content that you have because you're touching on different search queries. And people don't just type in one query and necessarily convert. They're typing multiple queries over a certain time. And the bigger the purchase and more complex the purchase, the more touch points. And then your content is actually kind of like a salesperson. It's leveraging and building the relationship with your prospect, educating them and supporting them. But really the strategy only works if you zoom out, if you've really owned all of those touch points. So you have an, you need to have enough real estate on the SERPs, right? Because as we know, the majority of traffic's on the first page. Once yeah. you're on like the second, third page, you're getting one, two percent. So really you have to kind of own enough of the top real estate, but you have to own that across enough queries regarding to that topical relevance in order to get enough um, market share or, or, or awareness with the prospect during their purchasing and like their discovery journey. That, that's very, very, very well put. And um, that flows fairly well into kind of just the, the mechanics of, of how SEO works. And you talked about sort of needing to have uh, the, that being on the first page of an, the right breadth, the optimal, the maximum breadth of queries to get people going to the pages that are most important for, for your conversion. You know, and that's something that to like the double click into for the point around, you know, not all traffic to, uh, is is of, of equal value. Not all pages are of equal value in your customer journey. And the more that you can get people in to lower uh, to to pages that are relevant to lower in the in the funnel, closer to conversion, the more impactful it's going to be. And that's and, and I would say this is where the uh, more SEO mature, SEO sophisticated clients of deep crawl. This is the, the level that they're thinking about their SEO strategy. It's not just you know how do we maximize our our organic traffic? How do we how do we rank as highly as possible? It's how do we how do we get the right people coming to the right pages for the right for the right queries? Um, so I think that sort of just thinking again about the customer journey and and how do you how do you position SEO? How do you build a website, structure a website and create content to really, really, um, to, to maximize kind of the output of, of, a, of a funnel. And so something I think your, your perspective would be really interesting in, um, in, in, in kind of digging into is, is just how do you think about SEO in terms of uh, where it fits into all the other digital channels? And then the word integrate is used really intentionally in this uh, and the second, uh, the second bullet of, you know, it's not just a separate channel, but SEO is actually, you know, if you do SEO well, it really will impact most or many other digital channels as well. So maybe just talk about how you think about SEO as part of the overall digital mix. Sure. So I think um, it's a tricky question because It depends on the business and proximity. So if you think about paid search and next search, they're so closely related and intertwined that you have an amplification impact. 
So if you're kind of ranking with a paid search ad and an organic search ad, and you have a prospect who's coming in and consuming content, actually seeing your brand twice. And, and you know, there's a lot of research that shows the, the propensity and value of that. When you start thinking about other channels, you know, if you're running like TV ads, what we saw with lots of clients is suddenly their branded organic search, mm. the spend on it goes through the roof. And you're like, well, why did that happen? It didn't happen because of non-brand. It happened because people went, saw the TV ad, saw the Bass ad, went onto Google, typed in the brand name and clicked the first result, which obviously was a paid search ad yeah. or an organic right, ad, uh, like organic listing. And then you saw this increase in traffic. And then the same thing with social or paid social is you're kind of driving this traffic. And we had this funny thing with the e-commerce where one of the CMOs were saying, you know, why are we spending all the money on paid social? Our organic is through the roof. So then they paused um, paid social and they missed their target for the month because what she didn't realize was, you know, she didn't, she was just looking at last click. So she didn't think that what was the relationship between Facebook ads and organic search where really organic search was last click attribution, but the first driver was paid ads because that was the awareness. Now for that particular prospect, that was the right, that the business type, that was kind of their channel mix at the time. But I think it really varies because some businesses, they have huge volume of available non-brand traffic to tap into other businesses that are more niche they don't have as much organic search so the way organic search plays it becomes kind of a support mechanism for other channels that are driving that awareness but if you have a lot of non-brand search volume then search can be your primary driver of acquisition so it just really varies from business type and business maturity what the proposition is you know how big is your content team? How much authority does a website have? What does the site architecture look like? So, you know, when you start breaking it down, there's all these different variables, uh, you know, competitive context for what is the relationship between these channels and how SEO interplays into it. That's uh, the, you know, thinking about how every channel supports each other throughout the digital market, um, through, throughout the, the customer journey. If, w- one of the areas where, I believe it is most most um, most true is is the fact that now Google puts so much emphasis on user experience and site speed when it comes to when it comes to uh, their own rankings. And there is a little bit. It's worth saying there's a little bit of you know there's uh, data is, is it varies in in kind of like how much. Uh, site speed, core web vital is one of the big topics that Google has been pushing for you know the better part of a year. How much it actually affects rankings and, and search. But one thing that is we're seeing data really really consistent is that uh, for clients who have put a big effort into improving their their core web vitals, so in in effect improving their user experience, having a faster website that's more interactive or like that better better responsiveness to to both human and bot users conversion rates are going up conversion rates not just for seo traffic but all traffic to the website so when you think of, when we think about you know seo from deep cross perspective given we're we're working really on the technical aspect of seo with our clients most most intensely and the clients that are really successful in in making improvements to their core web vital scores haven't always seen a huge jump in in organic traffic, but again, almost universally, we've seen really, really substantial jumps in the click through rates into in conversion uh, once once people are on the their the website. And you know, with e commerce in particular, specialty retailer, they said they saw organic traffic increase. Like it was given the world that we're in, uh, increased still incredibly. Their organic traffic almost doubled, but because they they improve so much in their um, their core web vitals and their in their user experience. Revenue from organic traffic almost tripled. So that means the or, organic revenue from organic traffic was is three x is valuable. It was converting that much better, and they saw that consistently across a few other channels where just overall traffic is is converting. And maybe you know, I think this last last point of uh, is an important one to touch on this to not not uh, neglect it in in getting buy in from other team. You know, you're again working across all all digital. Uh, do you have any tips, any any ways that as you're for an organization that maybe isn't as SEO mature and SEO savvy, how how do you get buy in from other departments, from the other digital marketing departments, from the engineering organization who's you know actually building and making changes at the website? How do any any tips around getting them to care a little bit more about SEO and to be bought into SEO initiatives? 
Yeah, you take them to the pub and you get drunk with them. <laughs> the kind of short answer. Um, I say that I say that facetiously, but there is some truth to that. But uh, yes. just a bit more, a bit more practically for those who are a bit more introvertedly inclined and maybe a bit more um, ambitious and want to have a commercial impact. The biggest challenge I think SEOs have is they speak in tech speak, and commercial language is like you know French, French or Dutch or German. You've got to learn the, the commercial language the CMO speak with the board. And what they're interested in is revenue, pipeline. And SEOs, it's not like SEOs don't understand this. It's just that they have a, a preference for showcasing expertise through technical jargon. But what you actually do by that, you create a disconnect with the other teams where they don't understand what, what is the value? What is the commercial value? Like, why do I need, like, why does it matter what the number of C class IP range backlinks I have is? And it's like, why, why, why is that an indicator for Google for authority? And why should that take priority over adding another JavaScript for another email marketing attribution tool that now inflates the page load speed, which slows down the website by five seconds of mobile? That means we drop from position one to position six. And essentially what happens there, you realize that SEO have all this depth of knowledge, which is primarily technical depth of knowledge. And what happens is SEOs become um, a kind of typecast or like um, conditioned to think in this way. And then you start speaking in the jargon. The other person loses interest that doesn't understand. And what happens is you lose a connection. But really what's happening and, and on a deeper level, SEO as a channel suffers from really, really challenge with attribution and revenue attribution and transparency is what CFOs are interested in. It's what CEOs are interested in. It's like I need to have confidence and clarity of a predictive power that I'm going to hit my target because I need to translate that to my shareholders. And the truth is, it's very hard for SEOs. And I, I use SEOs as kind of a broad term for anyone yeah, who's doing course, SEO yeah. because obviously yeah. it's a very, very fragmented function is how do you how do you communicate that? Because it's a black box. And the truth is, as a CEOs, we're constantly trying to figure out how to optimize and improve in order to drive more traffic and drive more conversions. Now, that's one challenge. The second challenge, I think, is an SEO function is actually not a specialized function per se. It's a hybrid of web design, web development, front end, back end, like server, Content mobile. Creators you know, JavaScript. And it's like, when you start taking this, what you start doing is you're treading on everyone's toes. You're treading a bit on design stones because you're talking about conversion rate optimization because you want to increase conversions. So you start speaking that language, but then you're kind of in that territory. Then you start talking about page load speed time, which is now IT's department. And now you start talking, so you got design development. And what happens is that SEO function is such a fragmented function. It, it's kind of hard to place it. And because it's very, so you're speaking in technical speak, you're kind of spread across all these functions. And then you're talking to a CMO marketing director who's juggling 16 other balls, right? With like between C-suite internal meetings, talking to vendors, managing their team, managing paid acquisition is probably where most of the spend is, thinking about brand or doing a rebrand or, or, or you know, driving the content engine. And in all of that noise, that's when it becomes very tricky. So how, so just like, how do we simplify the complexity? You got to learn how to speak business speak. And you've got to start talking commercial language, not SEO technical language. And you've got to build meaningful relationships by understanding how what you do is influencing those teams and how to support them in their initiative and functions. And as you encourage collaboration, which is not necessarily the forte of a, of a, a function that's primarily a technical function, right? Yeah. Like project managers and account managers or salespeople, they're very like people-led. People who tend to be SEO, they tend to be more technically led. But that type of language doesn't really gel in terms of collaboration speak. So you kind of got to start learning the collaboration speak lingo. You've got to practice that and refine it. Then you've got to start honing on your listening skills to start figuring out how to align your initiatives with those teams' initiatives. So if you start shifting these, I believe that you will see better traction and better buy-in from other teams. That would be my top two tips to, to accomplishing or doing that. Yeah, and I'll ad adapt what what you just said. I think the SEOs are you know, they're they're naturally many of them very technical, um, technically minded. The way that they think about problems, it, it's around the technical problems, not the business problems that sort of are abstracted from the technical problems. But even even in working with the purely technical functions, web developers, analytics teams, 
there still is a, a, um, a propensity to use SEO speak. And I, when what we're seeing the, the clients that are kind of really effective at getting stuff done on the website, it is just is making a handful of small changes in how they think about SEO problems, technical SEO problems into really easily understood developer problems and making it very, very um, clear what this issue is, thinking in terms of user stories or you know, whatever um, development methodology a, a company uses and being able to translate that into the way that developers work in the way that they're going to really easily understand what is this issue, why does it matter, and how do I solve it? So kind of being able to know, know your audience when you're speaking to business people, when you're speaking to the CMO, VP of digital, digital marketing, got to get to the point business-wise. But even when you're speaking to the engineering department, you can't just talk about, I don't know, like, um, you know, a canonical tags where the logic is broken. It's got to be something that they need to understand really clearly. What does this mean? Like, what is the underlying technical issue? What's the user story behind it? And why should this be prioritized over the gazillion other things that their tickets are being created for on any given day? So, um, so I think it applies just as much to the technical side as it does to the business. In that sometimes SEOs think like, oh, I'm speaking technical talk, but developers don't have the SEO knowledge and the SEO context to understand why something matters and why it should be thought about. But I think the you um, gave gave a great segue into this whole idea of of ROI and how to think about uh, the real impact of of SEO, and this is. This is something that it's been one of the themes that, that has come up throughout our conversation. You know, the thing that I will tease out and make explicit is, is kind of what, what, you, what, what you said around the customer journey and the, um, like what, like when you're speaking to an S, a CMO, what is the actual impact of a investment in, in SEO? What is an actual, a specific investment in content, in uh, a tool, in a big change to the website or a small change to the website? Like what, how is this going to translate to a potential impact on the customer journey? And to think in funnel terms, is this going to be, you know, just a higher, uh, more, better, um, ranking for more terms, ranking for more queries, converting better, you know, thinking really, really specifically around your business's customer journey, how it's changed, and what does, where can SEO affect that funnel? Where can better SEO affect that, that funnel? And so, you know, maybe like, is there, in thinking about the, tra like uh, translating the, the concept of communicating business impact to more commercial people, any really tactical advice, any really specific things that can be done uh, that you've seen that to be really effective in that regard? Yeah, got it. So, um, I mean, fundamentally, if we think about SEO and the value from it, you can think of it in three ways. The first is I'm driving traffic and it converts immediately. The second is I'm driving traffic and I'm capturing it to nurture it for it to convert in the future, right? And the third is, you know, how is it impacting my brand or my brand perception? And that's effectively traffic that doesn't necessarily have immediate con conversion because it's part of the journey and I can't attribute it, right? But effectively that third one can would be in one of those first two classes if we could measure everything, but we can't. So from a CMO's perspective, there's only two strategic pillars. The first is how is this as a channel helping me hit the targets that I have assigned to me and I'm responsible for? And those are fundamentally going to be market share and revenue targets. So those are the two core pillars. How do you think about market share? Essentially, you know, in, in Google Ads, you got like a short term report, but in SEO, you have the same thing. You have, you know, how many keywords are we ranking for? And what is the ranking for each one of those keywords? What is my market share, right? And you can get that in, in different SEO tools, understanding you know, how, how are we doing? And then you have to compare that to your competitive set. And here's where it gets tricky because you have two competitive set, right? You have the competitors of everyone who's, who's um, fighting you on the SERPs, which can be Wikipedia and everyone else, right? And then you have your actual competitors who have similar products and are perceived in the same category. And then the problem is, you know, how do you find the mix of two? And then when you look at lots of different terms, it kind of gets all over the place. And I think the key here for SEO is to really understand that this is a pivotal dialogue with the C-suite and with the CMO. This is such a, a critical 
part of how they think, uh, the juxtaposition of them against others in the sector. And you really got to double down on paying attention to that and how you communicate that message and how you're communicating what you're doing to provide a competitive advantage. Then the second is really, you got to be figuring out attribution. And the key here is you got to simplify attribution, which is actually very complex, right? You've got to find a good vendor and you've got to put the tracking in place, really got to understand it well, not on the, on the technical level, and translate that into simplified as possible terms that can explain the customer journey and how you're going to communicate that to the CMO so they can take it to the board level in their deck and, and seem very authoritative and, and explain how a CEO plays and influences all these other channels. So really cracking attribution and how to do that is really quite critical. So those are kind of like, I guess, putting on CMO hat for a second, what CMO looks at and then how the SEO function can help support the CMO. And therefore for you as an SEO person, you know, how, how do I communicate to the CMO in that, in that context, but to try and help and, and translate the benefits and ROI. So fundamentally, you know, share of voice, share of search, right? You can do that through Google trend data, share of search, and you can do that through impression share report and paid search. You can do that for all the SEO tools, which is a market share. And then just a revenue, you know, that's really going to come from your GA or your attribution tool, your SEO tool integration. And then, you know, I haven't talked about all the other aspects of accessibility, on-page optimization, yeah. user experience, conversion, any of that stuff. I'm just kind of like simplifying the strategic pillars. Yeah, yeah. And I think the, the, key, the, the, the key concept is simplification. And one way or another, it just needs to be really like what, how much traffic are we driving? How much traffic, if we invested more, could we drive? And, or, you know, retroactively, we invested in these things, how much traffic? did we drive and and then how how did it convert uh the, the one other thing that I'll, I'll add to um to, to to everything that you laid out is that um the there are tools like semrush like conductor that give you the keyword volumes projected keyword volumes um and just being able to see the the total universe of potential organic traffic for relevant relevant queries or to look at a you know a pretty broad competitive set and see their total organic traffic and that gives you a sense of what is the what is the overall pool of traffic that we could win uh, if if our SEO was better and that you can from their model from the overall pool if you have five percent share of a share of, of traffic for for a given query or a given you know uh, a topic if that were to increase to six percent, to seven percent, to eight percent, all of that, you start to see. And given the volumes of of of, of search for any like even moderately mainstream business, you know, you start to see some really really compelling numbers. And if you can if you can make improvements, if you can win a greater share of of search, then uh, you there will be a really really compelling ROI almost every single time. Great. Well. That that was that was a really good, really tactical, um, practical, tactical way to to wrap up the open roundtable. Let's let's transition to the QA session. Uh, we've got a number of questions that have come in. So first one, I'm just going to read out the full question. And Oren, I'll, I'll leave it to you as to be the, the first response. Um, I'm the SEO manager for a company with nine brands in 12 countries. What are tips for managing teams of copywriters and marketing managers globally without having to micromanage? There are not enough hours in the day. Amen to that. So big, the, you know, broad team, big team, globally distributed. How do you, how do you manage and maintain, uh, make sure that, that quality standards are, are up to par? Yeah, I hear you on that, Sally. Um, I think the biggest challenge is you grow a marketing team is how to stay on top of the chaos and still maintain the standards. And I think there's only, there's only two ways to actually do this. So the first is you got to let go of the micromanagement and bring in more resource to support you. And that resource needs to be very well vetted. So you get, the right, you get the right people on the right seats in your team. And it's really critical because what people do is like, I need more people. You don't need more people. You need the right people. So you're really going to focus on the quality, especially for people that you're managing. So if you have 12 people and they're direct reports, that's way too many. You need to have two or three people under you and they manage those 12 people. And you've got to let, be willing to let go 
but you can only be willing to let go if you have the quality. So that's the first part of the equation. You've got to get the right people, you've got to build that buffer in, and that's how you're going to do it, because otherwise you're going to go nuts. The second, so you've got to have really well-defined systems and processes, right? So if you go and you look on process street or you look online and you look for standard operating procedures, what you're going to be able to see is standardized methodologies as a specialist function. And the, the more robust and rigorous your QA process and your systems and processes, the more effectively you're going to be able to scale. So if you have the right people with really robust, strong, well-defined systems and processes, it will, you know, you'll be able to sleep at night, you're not going to be stressed out, you're going to deliver the quality. The problem is, you've got to create the time to prioritize this, which means you've got to stop firefighting, you've got to stop doing the stuff that adds low value, you've got to focus on things that's going to have the most impact on your, you and your team. Now, that means you probably have some weak people on your team, and you've got to get rid of them. And that's very painful to do, because you probably have to um, hit a certain volume or cadence of content. But those people are draining you of your time and your energy. You've got to get rid of the weak people in your team, because your team is really the average of all the people on it, you got to get rid of them, that will free you up more time and energy, then you put that into finding the right quality people building the systems and processes to scale. I hope that helps. Yeah, and, uh, I think what, to build off of, of process and systems, I think data and tooling, I would put that as a key, a key um, a pillar of that. And the SEO is inherently a, a data intensive discipline, being really smart about, about the data that you are looking at pulling data into custom reports that are most relevant for your initiatives, for your business. So just being really, really smart around the way that you're looking at data to track performance and, and track track kind of a, a, a broad set of, of um, leading indicators that are going to tell you whether you're, you're on, on the right the right track. Uh, and there's a lot of automation. Deep crawl, this is one of our, our value propositions. We bring a lot of automation into, into, into monitoring of the health of a website. Uh, and there's a lot of data that can be pulled from that for that pertains to content. We have tools that can help just automate and check QA standards for make sure that they're always met as uh, a, a distributed team is, is making changes to the website. So tooling and the way that you, that you use data, I think this is really, really key for, for scale. Um, yeah, you have to have the right tools to support your processes, because if you build the systems and processes in a manual, how, what are you doing there? You know, really, there's so many incredible tools out there for SEO specific tools, but also you can get very smart with natural language processing tools, and you can start really implementing very smart methodologies for improving quality and like, automating templates for content creation to try and scale and get, because really you need content, you need the right quality and depth, and but the right frequency. Now you can't just keep churning out content because if you don't have enough authority, you're not going to get those indexed. So really, you've got to, you've got to kind of prioritize the high value pages that are going to have the highest propensity for conversion and drive the right type of customer. And what I see a lot of SEOs do is they're trying to rank for too many terms in too many industries and too many sectors, and they're spreading it too thin. They don't have the site authority to actually command that much volume. So you really got to be smart with your, with your prioritization, and then you've got to get automation to support you in that process. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Any any magnitude of scale at some point, you need you need the the tools and you need you need the under underlying kind of like this is what technology enables to enable scale scale with quality. You know. All right, that's uh, let's go to another one. I'm going to go with uh, Militia Oakley Wilson asked. Where do SEOs end and web devs begin? I know there's a major shift for SEOs to learn code and more advanced technical skills, but at what point can I pass things off to the dev? Smiley face. So asked with friendliness. Yeah. This yeah, I think, I think the, the challenge here is, um... yeah, sorry. No, no, please go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, I'd say like, you know, every marketer I speak to, the biggest bugbear is like IT. Like in some capacity, if it's like a front end coder, putting their time, getting the resources, really, really tricky. So like what I would recommend you do is you try and do as much as you can yourself, learn it, outsource it, whatever you can, use automation, use smart tooling, and then, you know, pass it on to what specialist there is, things that you don't have access to. And where does it start? Where does it end? You know, I, I encourage marketeers to become... To, to, to think of marketing as a strategic competence, which means influencing the bottom line of the business. And that's what you want, right? You want to get paid more money. You want to have bigger impact. You want to elevate the perception of SEO as an industry. And the way to do that 
is to not hyper-focus just on the technical aspects, but to really develop commercial acumen. The person who manages to do both pillars well shines because you've got the best of both worlds, right? So really, it's not just like technical versus commercial speak, but right, try and get the hybrid of the two. If I do the delegate anything that is outsourceable, commoditized, and doesn't have the direct impact and lever for, for your targets and the growth that you can facilitate. As, as, a, as someone who's responsible for the SEO function. It's a very blurry line because, you know, SEOs traditionally used to be on on page, then it became off page, then it became content driven because off page, you kind of, you know, you couldn't manipulate it as well. You know, you used to be do, able to do back in the day, exact text um, anchor, right? So you get like anchor text, exact match, you like get back tons of backlinks, you'd get penalized. That was very painful. You'd have to remove all the hard work that you did. And then you know, the ranking would soar. So manipulating backlink and off page became harder. And then the shift went back onto kind of content and on page and site architecture. So where does web dev and, and SEO, I think it's progressively becoming a bit more holistic, more user experience focused, and then becoming a bit more content driven, I think more understanding the nuance of mobile and responsive and how they interplay. I think more about really optimization. And I think now in larger organization, SEO influence the IT by having really strong briefs, having really great relationships and educating and elevating the perception in the organization. In the, yeah, in the, what, I'll state one somewhat blindingly obvious thing, but uh, there's a, a implication to that. It, it's going to also depend organization to organization. You know, Deep we work with a lot of large enterprises. Most SEOs that we work with in the large enterprise context can change very, very little themselves on, on the site. They have to work through other parties. And I would just say, the, I think the key that, that in or in you, you touched on, uh, this in a few ways, but it's just really understanding how different teams work. And when you're talking about web development in particular, you don't necessarily need to have expert to expert level JavaScript coding skills to just understand the fundamentals of JavaScript and be able to speak really intelligently about challenges of, of, um, of the developers who are writing in, in JavaScript and just understanding their perspective, understanding the way that they work, understanding how that they think about prioritization or the development organization and, and, and making it as easy as possible for them to understand what you're trying to get them to do uh, and, to, and to be able to execute on it. Um, we're, we're running low on time, but there's one question that had two, there's two questions around, uh, around checklists and how those have evolved and how those should be thought about. Maybe, maybe I'll just, finish with that one and unfortunately we won't be able to get to the remainder but or how do you when it comes to seo checklists you know is this something is this something that still is relevant is this outdated if it's still relevant how has it evolved yeah i think it's um it's an evolution right so i think nowadays if you think about automating or increasing crawlability increasing the site architecture you kind of have the strategic pillars structurally about the content and how that sits and how you're optimizing for it in terms of like the checklists for on-page components, you should really have an SEO tool like Deep Call do a lot of this heavy lifting for you rather than you manually be thinking about that or doing that. Because I think nowadays it's relatively standardized and, and as AI develops, it will take over more and more of that. Really, I just see that now it's an evolution of the checklist. I think you have strategic checklists, which are fundamental and that's really important for you, you know, how we position ourselves in the market. What is the content initiatives we need to invest in? You know, how are we um, architecting the site, aligning to our new services that we're developing within the context of our brand and our competitive landscape? And in that mental strategic checklist, an SEO tool is not going to really, it can inform you, keyword research or clusters, or you know, there's lots of different ways to do that, but it's not going to do it for you. But the checklist for on-page optimization you know, that's decreasing in terms of manual significance. It's still critical for, for callability, but like you shouldn't be doing that. And if you're doing that, you're not using the right tools in my opinion. Yeah, and that's I think that really well put. I would agree with that. It, it's checklists are can always be relevant as a tool for, uh, for maintaining quality standards. There are really black and white are you meeting this, uh, is a page indexable? Do you have the right volume of content in the metadata in the body? Deep crawl is, is we have at our automation hub tests exactly this. 
to free up the mental bandwidth to, to do the types of things that Oren was talking about, to be creative, to be strategic, to think, you know, to, to think much more broadly than just, are we doing the nuts and bolts of SEO well? And the more that you can, can lean into tools uh, and, and, and automation to handle that, the more you or your team, you're the team of SEOs, will be able to think really creatively, to think strategically, and really think about business impact. How do we drive business impact and communicate business impact? There are a bunch of other good questions, but unfortunately, we're, we're out of time. Um, so I'll, I'm going to do, going to bring up a, a closing slide. But before I do that, I want to say thank you very much, Oren. Really appreciate your time. Really, really insightful commentary. Expertise, uh, perspective you brought was, was awesome. Really enjoyed the conversation personally. I hope everyone who is listening also enjoyed it and got a, at least a handful of really practical tips as well as had their kind of just some broader learnings that they'll take away from this. So thank you very much. All right, uh, a, few, a few final um, housekeeping. Uh, sorry, bear with me as I'm trying to get Zoom to do what I wanted to do. All right, so thanks everyone for, for attending. Uh, just as a reminder of a few things, uh, there's going to be a survey that is sent out right after this webinar. It will take, it's three questions, it'll take a minute. Your feedback is super useful as we figure out um, how to do this better, what other topics to address. We do have another webinar coming up on the 9th of February, Building a Successful SEO Strategy for 2022 and Beyond. We also have a few eBooks that are available on the DeepCrawl website that are relevant to many of the topics that we discussed. And then of course, we are here to, uh, if, if there's anything that we, Deep Call can do to help you with your SEO and specifically technical SEO, if automation, um, getting better data is an initiative that of, of yours, there's, we'd love to do a demo of our products and just talk about our solutions much more broadly. Um, so that is it. Thank you very much. Appreciate everyone's time. And we look forward to engaging with you in the future online or directly through conversations in a demo. Thank you. Bye.